In this video, we'll see what you have to focus on while doing the neurological or musculoskeletal examination. These tests are very similar, so I put them in the same video. If you cover all of these points, you will have covered everything that has to do with these examinations. We'll start by introducing ourselves, confirming that this is our patient, briefly explaining the examination process, and gaining consent. The patient should be in supine position, and you can start by performing the Glasgow Coma Scale. It tests three parts, the eyes, the mouth, and the body. The patient gets four points if he can open his eyes spontaneously, three points if he opens them to commands, and two points if he opens them only to pain, and one point if there is no response. For example, if you ask the patient to open their eye and they do, but otherwise they are, their eyes are non-responsive, they get three points. But if they cannot open their eyes unless you pinch their skin, for example, then this is a response to pain, so they get two points. In the verbal response, the patient gets five points if they are conscious and oriented, four points if they are confused, three points if they have inappropriate responses, and two points if they have incomprehensible sounds. One point if they have no response at all. So for example, if you ask a patient what time it is, and they just respond by saying the color is blue. In this case, it's an inappropriate response, so they get three points. And if you ask them a question and they just mumble some incoherent sounds, in this case, they get two points. In the motor testing, the patient gets six points if they can obey commands, like lifting their arm, or clapping their hands. Five points if they can move their limbs to localize the pain. Four points if they withdraw from the pain. Three points if they have abnormal flexion, which is a sign of decortication. Two points if they have abnormal extension, which is a sign of decerebration. And one point if they have no response. You can interpret the results as follow. The patient is likely to have minor brain injury or no injury at all if their score is from 13 to 15, moderate brain injury if the score is 9 to 12, and severe brain injury if the score is 3 to 8. Unusually, the cutoff point for intubating the patient is 7 or 8. You can check the mental status of the patient by checking their level of orientation and consciousness. You can examine the orientation by asking the patient about the time the person and the place. Cranial nerve testing is very important, but it's more complicated and more in-depth, so we'll explain it in another video. While performing the motor examination, you can start by inspection. So for example, if you're examining the lower limbs for their motor function, you will inspect both lower limbs, look for any scars, any deformities, any asymmetry, either because of swelling or atrophy, or any fasciculation, which is a fine tremors in the muscles. And you can continue by palpating the muscles, look for any lesions or masses, check the muscles bulk, and compare it to the other side. The range of motion is tested both passively and actively, which means that you will ask the patient to do the movement themselves. This is the active range of motion, and you can test it passively by asking the patient to relax their limb and you can move it for them. The scoring test is of five points. The patient gets zero points if they have no visible or palpable contractions, which means complete paralysis of the muscle. A score of one means that there is some trace movement, some visible or just mildly palpable contractions. Two means that there is a poor contraction, but the patient has full range of motion with gravity eliminated meaning if you support their arm, they can move their hand. Three points if the movement is fair, meaning that they can do full range of motion against gravity without you supporting their arm. Four points if there is good range of motion with gravity and against moderate resistance. And five points if they can move their arm or whatever limb you're examining against gravity and maximum resistance. Sensory examination is conducted by examining the patient's sensation to touch, pain and temperature together, vibration, or position sensing. 
So for example, you have a small piece of cloth and you can move this against the patient's skin and ask them if they feel it. You can use a toothpick or some mildly sharp object to sense the pain sensation. And you can place something cold against their skin to see if they feel the cold temperature. Vibration can be tested using the tuning fork. And position sensing can be tested by asking the patient to close their eyes, moving their arm somewhere, and ask them to know where their arm is, which indicates the function of the cerebellum. There are six main gates that you need to test for. You'll ask the patient to walk forward and backward, and you can examine their gates. Antalgic gait occurs when a patient has limping due to pain. So if they're experiencing some pain in the right foot, you will notice that most of their walking occurs in the left foot, and they can only use the right foot to balance themselves and get out of this tense phase. Paretic gait occurs due to a paralysis or weakness of one side which is also known as the stippage gait. The patient basically drags one of their feet across the floor. Spastic gait is very characteristic. You can look for stiffness in one of their limbs, and it looks like they're moving against the resistance. Ataxic gait occurs when there is some cerebellar issue or sensory dysfunction. Look for some uncoordinated movement, and the patient is likely to have a broad-based movement. Basal ganglia dysfunction causes hypokinetic movement. The patient basically shuffles or have a slow gait while walking. And dyskinetic gaits occur when the patient have involuntary movements during walking. And you can finish your examination by testing the deep tendon reflexes. The biceps reflexes tests the C5 to C6 nerves roots. Triceps reflex testing tests the C7 nerve root, patellar reflexes tests L3 to L4, and ankle reflexes tests S1 to S2. The patient gets zero point if the reflex is absent, one point for just trace movement, two points if it's normal movement, three points if it's brisk or acute, four if it's non-sustained and the patient have clonus, and five if the patient has sustained clonus, which is a sign of multiple sclerosis or some severe neurological issue.